Oh, come on. Good afternoon. Thank you. Who's excited to be here today? Any half? Are your batteries flat, sir? Top off. My goal today, you're safe, it's fine, you can relax your arms, you can let your arms go. My goal today is to give you the how-to. You've learned a lot about what to. But here's my guarantee, you're going to walk away and not do a thing. I'll, get, I'll put money on that. People that go through triple bypasses, and the doctor says to them, Mr. Deval, you're 50 kilos overweight. If you don't change your lifestyle, you will die after this operation. You have to change. Do you know that 90% of people go back to the old habit? That's crazy shit. You're exactly the same. <laughs> it's a life and death deal. And they, they go back to habit. And that's why I know that you're not going to do a thing unless I give you a secret tool. So let's take you there. You see, unless we change how we think, how we see the world, how we speak to ourselves, how we show up, nothing is going to change. Who's made a New Year's resolution to lose... 10, 20 kilos? Come, let's be honest. Who made the resolution? Did you do it? No. Not yet. The problem is not yet until I die and then it's too late. So, we've been talking about doubling your business. But I want to share something with you because I'm excited. And I'd like you to, sh to, to, to celebrate with me. Can you say whoopa? No, come on, like whoopa! So I'm excited. Let's go. One, two, three. Hoppa! Do you ever get that feeling in your business? Where do you get the whoopa? On a Friday? <laughs> <laughs> On a Monday? You know, but some people wake up and say, good morning, God. Others wake up and say, good, good God, it's morning. <laughs> And that's going to control how you show up at work. If I could show you a way to just grow your business by one and a half percent a week, how hard would that be? Who could grow their business by one and a half percent a week? Come on, excuse me, one and a half percent a week, are you wussy or what? Really? One, not one thousand percent, one and a half percent, it's a nothing. In a year, that is 97%. That doubles your business in one year. For the kind of people that are here, the frustrators, the resilient, the make it happen, the four trackers, the four trackers. I think you could, who, who thinks they're going to do it in a year? Come, let's see, where's the commitment? Are you interested in being wealthy or are you committed to wealthy? Come, hands up, who's, who's, who's in? Who would like help to do it in, in a year? We'll show you. So, when I was 24, I was sitting in the front, Wendy Evans, international speaker, her and I were friends, she traveled the world doing workshops and speaking, I said, I'd love to do what you do. She says, here's the recipe. Research, write the book, create the workshop and go to America, they'll love you. I mean, I had the recipe. I was 24. And I went home and I said, yes, I've got the recipe, I've got the secret, she's doing it. If you have a recipe, could you follow the recipe? Hey, if you give your grandmother's recipe, you can bake a cake. Three birds sitting on a fence. One decides to fly away. How many are left? How many are left? Three. A decision is not equal action. We all make decisions, but not many of us act and take them out. I created more in five years than my entire life. Because I had somebody that held me accountable. You say you're going to do this? Do it. Don't come with some wishy-washy, I had a headache, or I came home late to a bubble us. If you're going to say that you're going to do this by Friday, you had better do it by Friday. And also, one of the reasons you should listen to me is I'm a billionaire. I'm a cash billionaire. I can see you don't believe me. When you meet Donald Trump and he says I'm a billionaire, do you ask checkers a dollars, pesos, or, or quachos? <laughs> hey? So before, when I was speaking to, to Rian, he said these guys need to learn how to promote and, and pitch and build their business. I thought I'd get you, get you a book. 
that you can learn how to do it really well. Who wants it? Pick me! <laughs> who, who wants it? Please give him a round of applause. That's the reason why you're not successful as you could be. Why didn't you come? I'm serious, why didn't you come and get it? You say, pick me, pick me. We're sitting at home in our armchairs saying, life come to me. We don't want to work, we don't want to put an effort, we don't want to risk looking a fool. But if you want to achieve, be, do and have, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. And he nearly failed, because he comes up and he says, um, um, and that's a problem, we're driven by fear. If you're going to be successful, you have to break through what other fools think of you. Because it's fools that are thinking this stuff about you. Wealthy people and successful people don't think down, they think you up. It's the fools that think you down and will point and blame and shame you. Alright, I'm sure you know this. All right, so write down on a piece of paper. We had this song, this great, incredible song. How much of the potential to dance did you use? <laughs> Give yourself a score between zero and 100%. I saw some yeah, two. I saw some oaks, like, kind of like, yeah. <laughs> some oaks at the back, yeah. On a scale of zero to 100, how much of that opportunity did you use to celebrate life? Can you change yesterday? Can you change tomorrow? Charles, sorry, change tomorrow for me, please. Make me a billionaire, cash, dollars, not pesos. You cannot, you can influence what tomorrow can be. Where is your power? Only now. How did you use that now? So on a scale of zero to a hundred, how much of your potential for that song did you use? Or wasn't it the right song? I don't like that beat, I don't like him. He's not gonna... You know, we've got, all this, we've got all this BS of why we don't perform to our best. You're going to buy different clothes? Greeter. You're going to buy a better car? Greeter. Bigger house? Greeter. Bigger diamonds? Greeter. Guitars? Greeter. <laughs> you see, those are all means goals. They're not the end goals. When the guy buys the BMW, does he want a piece of stock style? Or does he want the feeling that it gives him? Everything we do is to get the feeling. The means goal is the money, the mood, the stuff. I used to be a Ferrari salesman. Dinka. When I was 21. And I used to sell Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches. In those days it was 66,000 rand for a brand new right-hand drive red GTSI Ferrari. I couldn't afford them in those days because I was 21 and just buying my first house. But I wanted a nice car and I liked a 20 SL. And I saved up and eventually I went and I bought one. I paid cash, petrol blue. I climbed in my car, I paid the money and I drove home. You know when you get to the robots, like you look who's, who's looking. I mean, why otherwise? Why, why do you buy it otherwise? I mean, if no one's looking, isn't it a waste? So you pull up at the robot, like you don't want to be too obvious. Like. It's a convertible, so my hair had to be cut. For that goldfish, yo, he's in cut if he misses. Help, help. But if you aim for double and you only get 80%, is that a bad thing? If you aim for 100 and you only get 50%, is that a bad thing? So then, the fear of missing drives out all our decisions and we now live, we're focusing on the problem, the fear and the loss and the danger, not on the benefit and the upside. It's, didn't want to be born. <laughs> your, your, father was, your father was obviously a good salesman. <laughs> what is the mindset of a winner? What, what is the thinking pattern of a winner? How do they feel? What do they say? 
You see, so how do we go from slow? I knew, I knew one of you would be here today. But we get stuck by habit. Who watches TV? Oh my God, oh my God. What's that thing that you used to change the channel? No. It's an automatic income reducer. Why are you laughing? Who's ever made a million watching TV? Then what the hell are you wasting your time? They're watching Days of Our Wives. Mary's done this and James has done this. Who cares what the cuck you've made? Live your life. Get out of their beds. I believe everybody brings happiness, hey? Some by coming into the room, some by leaving the room. <laughs> Which one are you? When you come from love and peace and joy and happiness, your, your mind and your brain and your creativity and your innovation open. You can do a whole lot more, but you have to manage what you focus on because what you focus on, you get more of. You have to control what's going on in this machine here. So think about it. What would you like to have happen in your business in the, with, with what may? Let me tell you, you're all successful because the day you were born, before you even were born, that spermatozoa that came out of your dad raced like crazy <laughs> down the passage and hit the goal and scored and that's why you're here. So from day one you've been a success. He had flippers on the oak crook, man. <laughs> Not recently, a while ago, I paraglided in the Drakensberg here, I fell, 50 meters, smashed my body, crashed, hole in here, hole in here, no, but crashed, three months in hospital. I love the flying, but I'm now nervous of flying. And so we, if something's happened to us, if a dog's bitten us once, we're scared of all dogs, you know, if a woman betrays us and divorces us once, we're scared of all women or, or men or the, whichever way it goes, you know, I went half. And are we scared of losing half of our assets? Love and your word. How good is your word? How good is your integrity? And how much love do you bring? Not love your neighbor, let's go home. How much, <laughs> how much love for, for, for another person, for another soul beyond race, sex, color, religion, culture? Do you come from love? Do you show that love in the way that you, you deal with your staff and your customers? Close! Close! No! No! There we go! Got it! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the man over here! If you take a frog, put it into cold water, and heat it slowly, what does a frog do? It says, well, it's a little bit warm, eh? But I'm, I'm reasonable. I'll accommodate, I'll balance, I'm cool, I'm fine. And as the jacuzzi gets hot, it's no, no, it's fine, it's I'll... And eventually, you will, the frog will die, it'll boil. If you threw the frog in like boiling water, it'll jump and say, oh, I'm, I'm out. Humans are just the same. We accommodate, and we're okay, we're fine, I'll accept. It's the death of your success. <laughs> Only that little whooper! Only that little whooper! If you got an order today, hi, how's it? Yeah, we're doing the deal, two, two million rand transaction. How are you going to feel? <laughs> so please stand up, introduce yourself to somebody behind you and just say, I just got a two million rand deal and I feel fantastic. <laughs> introduce yourself to two people around you with your new energy. I feel flipping fantastic. And so, one, two, three, let's go. <laughs> what is it that you wish for yourself going forward? For 2017, this is the best, most powerful, proven, scientifically validated goal setting process. Number one, what is the want and what is the wish? What will you see, feel, and hear in December? What will it look like, feel like? How will you feel? Get a picture. Put yourself there in the future. 
What will you hear yourself saying? What will you see in your bank account, the people around you? What would that feel like? How will you overcome the obstacles? Get a picture of how you will overcome those obstacles. Employing staff, managing staff, becoming sales oriented, taking action, digital marketing, learning. How will you overcome? Because we've, we've really learned we can overcome anything, eh? With the right pressure, we can overcome anything. See how you'll do that. Set up a plan. Take, make a plan, an incremental daily action plan. And then take action. I had a family feud. Fought with my mother, my father, my two brothers. So deep, so bad that if you put a gun to my head and said, go and see them, I would die. Emotionally, I wouldn't go. I was shut down, pissed off, annoyed, pitchy, bitchy. Anything you want to say, I was that. Seven years, I didn't speak to my folks. We lived in the same area. It's not good. It hurts. It hurts, eh? It's been Yeah, it's by But it wasn't me. My heart was shut down. My brain was saying, you know what they did to you? You know how bad they are? And one day I was at a workshop and the guy said, is there something you know you should do, could do, would do, if you did do, would change your life? Do you have something like that, that you know if you could do, would do, should do, would change your life? So I said, yeah, I need to talk to my folks, but it's not going to happen. Not in this lifetime. So he said, take something that you value. Think of something that you value. A material asset. Tangible material asset. Car, boat, plane, train. Mine was my disco, 250,000 rand disco. And so he said, here's the process. Contract with a buddy that by next Friday, 12 o'clock, you will talk to your folks. Easy. If you don't, he gets your disco. Ooh. Ooh. But I'd made the contract because I knew I should, could, would, but didn't. But I made the deal, I shook my hands. I said, if I don't talk to my family by Friday at 12 o'clock, you get my disco, my CDs, my everything. 10 to 12. No phone. 5 to 12. 3 minutes to 12, I picked up the phone because I had to. If it had been 20 grand, I would have like, said, take the, take the money, take the money. But because it was something big and consequential, I dialed. I don't remember what my father said. My mother couldn't remember what the fight was about. She was happy to have me back. And a part of my brain is saying, what are you doing going back? My other part is saying, it's time. But the gift was, if I didn't have an accountability partner with a big consequence, I would never have done it. I'd be stuck. I'd have had still today. Here's a little test for you. Write down what your monthly total insurance package is. Oh, about five minutes. Yeah. Write down what you spend, total, all insurances per month. Home, health, medical, business, car, boat, plane, train, jet ski, <laughs> wife, girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, <laughs> divorce. You know, what do you spend on insurance? Get, have you got a number? Double that number. So if it's five grand, now it becomes ten. Add two notes. Somebody give me a number. Monthly insurance. Four thousand. So we double it, becomes eight thousand. Add two notes is eight hundred, eh? That's how much you're going to spend on insurance in ten years. Eight hundred thousand for that per ten. Now, when you spend on insurance, what do you get? At the end of 10 years, what is he going to have in his hand? Extra. Nothing. Because the insurance is playing not to lose. But at the end of 10 years, you're not going to have much more than you started with. In fact, you're going to be 800 k short. How much are you, are you investing in you to ensure that you are successful? Are you also investing 800000 or more in yourself? In 10 years? Because if you don't, don't expect to be successful. You'd like me, cheapskate. Dental floss, hundreds of dental floss lines, you can just see the lines here, hundreds of lines of dental floss. And on the seat where we take off, 
It's, look, it's a cliff and it's 645 meters down. So you stand back and you get ready as best you can and now you've got to run to inflate this thing above your head. And the guys are watching that you don't have sticks and bits and pieces, but you've got to pull it like crazy. And they're saying, go, 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 go. Now the problem is, if I'm like, yo, okay, maybe I'll be fine, I'll get, I'll, get to the, I'll get to the edge and it might be inflated. I'm in poo. I'm in big poo. Because what happened when I crashed, is I got to the edge, and I wasn't completely organized, and I had a harness, you know, you sit in a harness, and the harness caught one of my things on the side here, and it was very sore. And so I let go, the controls, my paraglider flew underneath me. And I'm like, hello, shouldn't you be up here? And so I became a 110 kilogram, eight meter long pendulum into the rocks, into the mountains, and smashed me. But seconds before that, people had been saying, go, go, go. But I survived. And I've flown again with a strong pumping heart with a bit of adrenaline. But I flew again. And I will always fly. Because that's part of the dream. Is to go beyond the limitations of average Joe. And to be in that 3% of people who take the action. Against all odds, against all storms, all rains. I dance in the storm, I dance in the rain. Kick your toes. Yes, it's sore. But get back up. Because if you don't, that learned helplessness will keep you. And this is a, a poem from Guillaume that for me is powerful. It says, come to the edge, he said. I said, we can't, we're afraid. Come to the edge, he said. We can't, we will fall. Come to the edge, he said. And they came. And he pushed them. And they flew. Are you ready to fly? You ready to go, 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 go? Are you ready to fly? So let's see how good you are. Everybody, please stand. Show us what you.